back to business here. The world of post trade and security services has experienced an unprecedented level of change with dramatic reductions in settlement cycles, new asset classes and an increased focus on sustainable investment practices. But this could be dwarfed by artificial intelligence which has the potential to transform the banking sector. And we're joined by Raoul Panaker, Head of Digital Client Engagement Security Services at BNB Paribas. He's here to talk about the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Hi, Raoul. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Thanks so much. Nice to be here. So hopefully this interview will be just as entertaining as the music we just heard. Yeah, <laughs> not a little bit more. <laughs> Even more. And let's talk about some of the most transformative changes on the tri horizon in the security services industry. Yeah, you know, as you said, we're we are witnessing remarkable evolutions, right? I mean, right from the T plus one settlement cycle to tokenization and to the ever-growing demand for sustainability and ESG. But when we speak about transformation, you know, I find it hard pressed to ignore the role of artificial intelligence. And this goes much beyond just because of the recent popularity of ChatGPT and the generative AI. The role of artificial intelligence transcends beyond that. And I personally believe, you know, it has the ability to transform banking as we speak. And you're seeing it real live uh, applied in use cases across industries, right, where it's improving operational efficiency, enhancing risk management, and uh, personalizing customer experience. With that being said, I think, uh, you know, to be able to move forward and tap into the full potential of AI, we need to first respect its power and most importantly address its inherent challenges as we all know still prevails. And I believe we can do that together. Well, you say, uh AI is ready to, to, to revolutionize uh, banking, but how, how ready is the financial industry to embrace AI? Uh, and what impact is it having on its, its institutions and its clients? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so the, the industry as a whole has embraced AI, especially because of its power to embrace and, and look at innovation. So applying innovation in AI, it's, it's synonymized. And you're probably also going to see a lot of uh, use cases across industries, especially for institutions where AI is synonymized with efficiency because you, AI and, and, and the power of AI to improve efficiency across the board is what's enabling institutions to you know, use the, this technology. We're already seeing so many applications, right? I mean, uh, robotic process automation, as you probably are aware of, uh, a lot of machine learning uh, use cases f in some industries, not in our world. Deep learning is also being utilized, so, and a lot of predictive analysis, you know, with respect to transformation, etc. And this is, you know, not just you know, is benefiting institutions, but also benefiting our end clients, right? And notwithstanding the advent and the evolution of ChatGPT and the generative AI, where it benefits clients. So obviously, you know, it's an ongoing world where I think institutions and clients are definitely going to benefit from AI. Do you have some examples of, of AI applications at BNP Paribas? Yeah, absolutely. So from a security services standpoint, we have already rolled out quite a bit of use cases with uh, robotic process automation. Uh, quite a few use cases are on process mining, you know, really taking data and using natural language and OCR, which is optical character recognition, to just quickly sift through documents which are semi-structured and structured. And as we discussed, you know, with the rise of T plus one and, and these transformations, you know, we're seeing a lot of predictive analysis being uh, put in place as well. So security services is also, you know, sort of working on these use cases as we speak. Quickly touching on external use cases for clients. So we ro uh, rolled out last year an LCC booklet uh, product, which is really using natural language for, you know, our MIS data for local custody clients. And again, just really trying to synthesize that information and providing clients high level executive summary. And uh, we also launched NOAA, which is our AI powered virtual agent. Uh, and it's been uh, going to be rolled out uh, throughout the course of 2023. Uh, in terms of, from a BNP Paribas standpoint, we are looking to have at least 1,000 use cases of AI by 2025, and we are halfway there. So obviously, you know, we're going to keep adding more use cases for our clients, but also for, for uh, us as, as a bank. You mentioned the, the virtual agents yep. uh, there. Can you tell us a little bit more about how it supports your clients? Yeah, you can see me beaming. You know, we're extremely proud and excited with the launch of NOAA. It's, uh, it's essentially an AI-powered uh, ch virtual chat agent. So we actually partnered with uh, IPsoft's Amelia, which is in an industry-leading cognitive AI solution. Uh, so it's actually plugged into our web portal called Neolink. And what we're doing is actually with 
three use cases for our early adopters and pilot clients. The first is really on our settlement data, you know, where NOAA can help the clients. Second is extensive uh, our custody networks. So we have plugged our marketing and client update tool uh, on NOAA as well. And third, which was a no-brainer, which is our online help tool, you know, where you know it, it, it promotes self-service and, and all of those. With that being said, you know, I think what we want to do is to work with the clients and to be able to, you know, take the next steps, right? And again, we don't want to work on assumptions, so we're going to be working with clients on the future use cases, and I think that's very important for us. But is this meant to replace uh, the usual client contacts, like, like relationship managers? Uh, fair point, and I would probably argue to the contrary. In fact, it's going to benefit the relationship teams and the client-facing teams. What we are seeing with uh, NOAA and, and generative AI and cognitive AI as such is, you know, it has the ability to take out a lot of repetitive tasks and low touch queries. And this frees up time for our client facing teams and support desk to focus on high touch and most importantly, you know, really high value added personalized experience. Look, at being prepared, I think at the end of the day, our focus is on providing the best in class service experience. And I think with NOAA, you're complementing that as well. And so obviously, as I told you, you know, there's a lot of uh, machine learning capabilities plugged into the cognitive AI as well. So those data is going to be absolutely useful for us to understand what else we can do. But obviously, you know, I think that balance is very important for us. As with anything new, it can be a leap into the unknown. And AI can also bring new problems uh, to the table. How does BNP Paribas uh, address these? It's a fair point, And I think we all see the, the challenges and the issues, especially around data privacy and regulatory compliance. Uh, so at BNP Paribas, that's the reason why we're taking a very cautious approach. You know, we our use cases on large language models is really internal and and focus around low touch use cases, uh, and 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 the foundations that we're building, especially around the use cases of large language models, is around data privacy, regulatory compliance, and protection of intellectual property. I just want to say one word. You know, I think we need to find the balance between human touch and automation. And I think that's absolutely going to be important to, you know, to, to not fall into the trap of over-reliance of AI. So I think that's very important going forward, especially with respect to large language models. Mm -hmm. It feels like the future is now. Like things that we dreamed about 20 years yep. ago are, are reality today. When we look ahead to the future, uh, what else do you see coming down the pipe in terms of the realm of AI? Yeah, first, uh, the integration of AI will deepen. And I think that's a no-brainer for all of us. With that being said, you know, I really hope and wish that we move towards explainable AI or XAI that we call in the industry. It's essentially to bring transparency and trying to understand why AI generated output is, why the output is coming from, from the AI. So I think that's very important. And I think one of the, the, the cyborg system was responsible AI. And so explainable AI is exactly that, you know, we want to drive transparency into this whole concept of large language models. Uh, what I'm, I'm definitely excited about is actually mixing AI and the rise of data, you know, especially with the rise of quantum computing and, and generating uh, computing at the edge. I think these are two powerful technologies mixed together that, that's, that's ex absolutely exciting for us. And I think it was, it's, it's probably a no-brainer as well that the AI and machine learning technologies combined will obviously you know, be here for, for, for the now and for the future. Well, Raul, it's been great to have you back here so at Cyboss TV. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time. Uh, there's still the rest of the week to go. I'm sure you've got lots more conversations to have and, and topics to cover, uh, and we hope to see you back here Thank you. in the not-too-distant future. Thank great you, real pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you.